It's people who make our country grow. make the difference the financial industry has changed a lot over the years I'm standing here between massive towers that were put up by TD Bank the sheer size of them represents the reach of this old and powerful industry TD Bank was founded in 1855 that's almost 200 years ago it took nearly two centuries for the large financial institutions to help shape the modern financial world as we know it but there's a new player in the game who's making waves and innovations after just six years in the industry that player is wealth simple. Earlier this summer, I had the pleasure of having the opportunity to speak with Michael Allen, the director of portfolio management at Wealth Simple, to talk about how they're changing the future of investing for my generation. We want to be the, the most human financial institution. Millennials uh, such as us, um, we are used to ease of use. And translating that to financial services is that um, seven years ago, especially in Canada, uh, to open up an investment account, you had to walk into a physical branch or meet a financial advisor, go through 30 pages of paperwork, and then your account is open. The tediousness of traditional sign-up processes to get started investing represents a major hurdle for new investors to actually begin. I remember when I opened up my first investment account over eight years ago. I walked into my bank branch and asked how I could open an account. They said, sure, we'd be happy to help with that. Just book an appointment with a financial advisor and they can assist you. I thought to myself, wait a minute, you mean I have to come back here again? Not only did I have to first come into the branch to basically just ask to open an account, but I'll have to come back again to go through what ended up being a very painful process. This is crazy just to get started. Fast forward to this year when I opened up a Wealth Simple account on my couch, using my phone, and in my boxers in a matter of minutes. Clearly, this industry needs this type of change where ease of use gets prioritized. I mean, let's be honest, how many of you watching this still call a taxi when we have Uber available? Uber broke down traditional barriers. The financial industry is filled with these types of barriers. Take complicated language, for example. There's so much jargon in the financial services space, and, there's, and, and to be able to speak in a very simple uh, way, um, really is, is not common practice um, in, uh, in the industry. So being able to explain things in very uh, simple terms is important. Most people who don't come from a financial background or who don't have a previous interest in personal finance tend to find approaching topics like investing to be really intimidating. And in my opinion, one of those reasons is because they're confronted by all of this new language that they don't understand. The financial industry has had a bad habit of overcomplicating what turn out to be really simple concepts. With the work that I create, I try and communicate these concepts in a much more palatable way. And the way I find most effective is through story. Being able to communicate through story is really, really powerful. My personal favorite is like the 28 year old who quit his, I believe it was a finance job in the UK and he flew to Alaska uh, to do a bike trip right, right down from North America to South America. Um, and it was his journey um, and how he funded it throughout that story was just really fascinating or somebody living off a dollar a day out in BC. Another traditional barrier preventing everyday people from growing their wealth in the stock market is account minimums. For a long period of time, most financial institutions wouldn't even give you the time of day unless you had a certain amount of money to invest, usually because the company wouldn't make enough money off of you in commissions unless you had a high account value. 
At one of the banks that I use, they will actually charge me a really high monthly fee if I don't keep over $15,000 in my investment account. $15,000 is a lot of money to somebody just getting started out. So basically the industry said, if you don't have X amount of money, you're not worth our time. But now that's changing with these new companies on the scene like Wealthsimple. Well, essentially what we did, we got rid of that completely and said, you can open an account with as, with, with, with as little as $1. And the power of that, especially being young, is it gets you in to some really good habits. How much interest did you earn off your first deposit into your high interest savings account? 25 cents. <laughs> and how excited were you for it? Really excited. And what did it do? Did it make you want to keep saving? Now it's at $10. Hey. The benefit of being able to start, even if you don't have a lot of money, is that you can start building these good financial habits now, so that once your savings start really taking off, you know the drill. Another problem with this old creaking industry is transparency. Specifically, transparency around the fees you were paying a financial institution for service. The financial industry is not known for being particularly noble, but the lack of awareness around fees was downright greedy for a long period of time. Uh, people want to know how much they're paying, and um, I don't think this is news to anybody, but uh, previously, uh, uh, previously to some re regulation uh, reforms, uh, fees are really difficult to calculate, so people didn't even know how much they were essentially paying. One way to think about this is that um, the concept of compounding returns um, is a fundamental uh, is a fundamental rule of investing. And in getting started early, it allows your uh, that snowball to build up over time. But when you're starting to think about invest uh, investment fees, it's also very similar. So you you start with ten thousand dollars. Say you're paying two percent. Um, that's two hundred dollars that you're going to pay for this year if you're in a say a higher price mutual fund. For like a ten year period of time, you're close to I think it's, it works out to be close to twenty five hundred dollars in fees. But imagine if you took that twenty five hundred dollars and then you invested that into a portfolio, paying five percent. So that money stayed in your pocket and now you are taking advantage and saying, I'm going to go invest that money instead of paying that higher fee. At the end of the day, it, there is a strong correlation between investment returns and the fees that you're paying. And it's not the higher fees tend to lead to higher performance. It's actually the exact opposite. So it's not like you're going to buy uh, a Mercedes Benz, which is going to give you a higher quality car than say uh, a Pontiac um at a lower price um the exact opposite with investing is true where like the lower the cost the greater the chances of a better performance and more money in your pocket that type of perspective was very refreshing to hear and i can honestly say after my conversation with mike that i came away feeling really good about the future of the financial world there's new people and new companies who are approaching the old problems of this industry with new solutions that ultimately make wealth itself much more accessible to everyone. That's why I decided to move my RRSP over from my old employer once I quit my job to Wealth Simple. And honestly, so far I couldn't be happier. The ease of use, low cost and automation features make it perfect for set it and forget it investments. If you're interested in trying out Wealth Simple, I'm happy to say that I've partnered with them to help people get started investing. Any Cash College viewer who signs up through the link in the description below will get $50 added to their investment account when they deposit $500. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below so you can see for yourself how easy it is to start building your wealth in just a few minutes. Later in our call, Michael asked me why I started this project, Cash College. I told him about how I was seeking to help change the financial world in my own way. And his response echoed mine. Yeah, and I mean, I think empowering people to live the lives that they want to live is exactly in line with what we're doing. That type of empowerment that gets us, like wakes us up every day and gets us excited to go to work, right? Where we're like, we are actually making a change. In I have to admit, that was the first time I heard those words out of the mouth of a portfolio manager, and I've spoken to quite a few. 
After nearly 200 years, the future of the financial industry may, just may, be bright.